under your care and protection. Thank you for your blessings. They never fail us. We thank you for our UIC and family. We ask that you guide all of our thoughts and actions to bring you glory. Lord, strengthen us, align us with you, and fill our hearts with your love and peace. Amen. Good morning, UICM, UICM family, giving all honor to God. Good morning, First Lady and Pastor Bobby. I will be doing scripture this morning. I will be reading from Psalms, the book of Psalms, verses 119, 104 through 112. And it goes as follows. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I promised it once and I promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. 
I have suffered much, O oh Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. I, I hate those. That was it. I'm sorry. I was going to keep going. You guys enjoy the service and welcome. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Welcome to Unified in Christ Ministries virtual worship service, a church for everyone. United in this diverse fellowship, we are called to the vertical alignment with God a time to align our purposes and spirits with his will. Here are the UICM happenings for the week. Join us tomorrow for Monday Mana at our new start time of 7.15 p.m. as we will be blessed by a word from our friend, Pastor Edward Seville's from the Breaking of Day Ministries in Norfolk, Virginia. Join us in receiving an encouraging and inspirational word from the Lord. You can tune into our Zoom sanctuary where the meeting ID is 2023 Two nine two six six seven, and the passcode is also two zero two three two nine two six six seven. You can also stream us live on Facebook, YouTube, and our website uicmchurch.org. Join us Wednesday night for fervent prayer hour from eight to nine p.m. Call seven one two four five one zero eight six eight using passcode three zero eight six two eight in the pound sign. Join us as we lift up concerns of this world. And if you have a special prayer request, please send them to us by using the prayer request form on our website, uicmchurch.org, or send us a text at 904-601-8279, and someone will reach out to you right where you are. Join us each and every Thursday for another awesome season for studying the Word of God. This season, the topic will be spiritual warfare, we will start our spiritual warfare study using the Holy Bible, some overview nuggets addressing spiritual warfare, and Jerry Rankin's book entitled Spiritual Warfare, The Battle for God's Glory. Classes start at 7 p.m. in our Zoom sanctuary, and for real-time interaction and engagement, you can join our Zoom sanctuary where the meeting ID is 833-567-8410. And the passcode is 2023-292-667. We'll see you there. Stay connected with Unified in Christ Ministry by filling out our digital connection card and receive real-time information from Unified in Christ Ministry. We're looking forward to hearing from you. If you'd like to learn and engage more with UICM, we encourage you to like, follow, share, and subscribe with us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Unified in Christ Ministry, Facebook at Unified in Christ Ministry 1, Twitter at UICM Church, and YouTube at Unified in Christ Ministry. And if you have a birthday or an anniversary, please let us know so that each of us can celebrate you. You can send that information via our website at uicmchurch.org or contact us at 904-601-8279. UICM family and friends, please remember to check on one another and keep each other in your prayers as well as our church. Good morning, Pastor Bobby, Lady Comet, uh, UICM family and friends. I'm Lynn Mars. And I'm Carmen Joyner. And it's giving time. Oh, sure. Time to get back a little of what God has blessed us with. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne, your throne, we come with praise, honor, and glory, just to glorify you, thanking you for your love, your amazing grace, and your tender mercies. We want to honor you with the fruits of our labor. You give us so much, and now we have the opportunity to give back with what you blessed us with. Your word says, given, it shall be given back to us the same measure. What a mighty God we serve. 
You supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. We give, we give to you today as a response to your goodness to us and the love we have for you. We pray our gifts will be acceptable in your sight, knowing you will multiply them for, the, for any needs necessary. We offer our gifts with love, joy, and gladness. And we surrender our thoughts to you in prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You will see on your screen there are four ways to give. There's Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, and Zelle. Just point your device in the direct, in whichever way you want to give, the code that you want to give. And enjoy the rest of the service. And thank you for your gifts. Oh 
have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found. Leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Of the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, Thank you, Sister Caitlin. Thank you, Sister Caitlin. What a beautiful song. I hope you listen to the words. As I was listening to her minister that song to us, I started wondering, is there a love that can compare to God's love? There is, a lo there is no love that compares to God's love. If you're out there chasing love, looking in all the wrong places, this song reminds you that there is no greater love than the love of God. And the interesting thing about that, one of the lyrics said that he's chasing after you. He's chasing after you. Wow. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. And yet he's chasing after us to shower us with his love. I hope you receive that this morning. I know I do. I hope you receive it deep down in your soul so that when you leave this service on today and you go about your life and you go about doing the, <clears throat> excuse me, doing the things that you have to do, remember that God loves you. And sometimes I pray that should be enough for you, that God loves you. Yes, I love you, my brother loves you, my sister loves you, we love one another, but there is no greater love than the love from God. And that should be enough for you when things aren't going your way, when things look like they up and down, sideways, and all this kind of stuff. You are the cause and recognize that God loves you. A lot of people don't even know that. But you have the knowing that he loves you. Amen. So thank you, Sister Caitlin, for
for reminding us of God's love. What a beautiful song. I truly love that song. I love that song. And yes, you're right. My sister just texted me and said that uh, the song illustrates embracing God's word intimately. That's timely. That lets us know that today's message and what we're doing here at Unified in Christ Ministry is not something we can make up. It's something that we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're following the functioning of what we need to do. And this word on today, embrace God's word intimately. Intimately is another message, another installment uh, for our vertical alignment with God preaching series. Let's go to the word of God. Hebrew, if you have your Bibles, please turn it to Hebrews chapter 4, chapter Hebrews chapter 4, and we're going to look at two verses in chapter 4, amen? And I want to read it from the AMP translation, all right? Here we go, Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to read for your hearing two verses. Here's what it says. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the divisions of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and both joints and marrows, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. And verse 13 goes on to say, and not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him who we have to give our account. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are my strength, you are my rock, you are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Embrace God's word intimately. Last week we talked about uh, one of the ways that we align ourselves with surrendering. One of our ways of uh, vertically aligning ourselves with God last week we talked about. It was surrendering wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ. I, I hope that you remember that. And we, we said last week that surrendering wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ, we do this by, one, denying ourselves, by taking up our own cross, and by following Jesus. If you missed it, please go to our website where you can check it out right there. We also shared that being aligned with God is when our hearts are right with God. It's when our spirits, our souls, and our bodies are working together peacefully and in harmony. When we surrender wholeheartedly to God, we align, we vertically align with God. Today, 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 we give you another thing that we have to do in order to vertically align with God. And that is, we must embrace God's word intimately. I'm not mad, you can go ahead and put it in the chat, you can type it in the chat. We pastors wanna talk about the fact that in order to vertically align with God, we must embrace God's word. And we must do this intimately. In order, and it's not only do we hear from God intimately, but it's through hearing from God. He gives us absolutely all the strength and the power we need to overcome the troubles of this world. While at the same time, when we embrace this word, when we embrace God's word, we begin to learn who God is intimately. The very God that we just heard in that song, 
that chases after us, the very God that we just heard in that song that loves us, the very God that loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son for me and you. Because the Bible says, so for God so loved the world. It just didn't talk about Kevin. It said the entire world. And he loved us that much that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah can go right there. That he gave us Jesus. And oh, by the way, this is not in my notes, but I think I need to let you know that Jesus, he died. He, he, he paid the price for me and he paid a price for you. And he hung up on that cop, on that old rugged cross way back on Calvary. And he could have come down, but he refused to come down. Why? Because of love. He refused to give up, uh, 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 give it up because of love. He stayed up there for me. He stayed up there for you. Why? Because of love. Love. That very love that chases after us. And God fulfilled his promise. And he raised him from the dead three days later. And as a result of him being raised from the dead three days later, he, 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 he sits up high and he looks low. Because of him being raised three days later, he got all power. And he sits up on the right, right hand of the throne. And I can imagine him looking down at you and looking down at me and saying, Watch that child right there. Bless that little girl. Bless that woman. Bless that son. Bless that daughter. Why? Because of love. And these are the things that we learn when we intimately embrace the word of God. My brothers and sisters, embracing God's word is personal. Embracing God's word is life-changing and life-enhancing. Embracing God's word is hearing and receiving all that God wants to communicate to you. I'm just trying to help you today. I'm just doing what God gave me to give you. There's something in the air. There's something in the atmosphere that's saying, baby, you got to embrace God's word. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're tired of the same old, same old, if you're tired of going through this and going through that, if you're tired of being woe as me, if you're tired of having a jacked up attitude, if you're tired of being mad, if you're tired of being said, then you got to embrace God's word. Embracing God's word it, 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 it intimately for yourself, it sets you free. It sets you free from the tension. It sets you free from all the lies. It sets you free from all the troubles that we are going to experience in this life. Jesus said that we would have trials and tribulations, but even in that same word, he said, take heart. For I have overcome the world. Embracing God's word intimately for yourself. You ought to do it daily. Because if you don't, your tensions, the lies of this world, whether it's come from the news, from a stranger, and even from your family, the lies and the troubles, they always attempt to take over your mind. They attempt to take over your heart. They attempt to take over your soul. Why? Because the, the Bible tells us that Satan, he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And we even learn in this in Bible study, if he can distract you, if he can snatch that word from you, then he's going to win this battle. My brothers and sisters, we have to. Embrace God's word intimately. The plain old truth is this. The most powerful tool that we can have in this life is that razor sharp word of God. The word is key when it comes to vertically aligning ourselves with God. Because the word is God's communication to us. The word of God is God's revelation of himself to us. If you ever wanted to know God, you must spend quality and sufficient time in the word. Thank you all for who read a verse a day. I appreciate that. But it's time for you to go deeper. 
It's time for you to go deeper and understand what that word means to you in your life. What is God saying to you? Because that word can speak to you directly. That word can speak to your system. I mean, your issues, your problems, and your circumstances. But you have to embrace this word. Embracing is a whole lot different from just glossing over something. When you embrace something, you 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 wrap that thing around you. When you embrace something, you hold it tight. And if you're embracing tightly, can't nobody snatch it from you. That word. Honestly, I've discovered over the years that there is no shortcut. And I've tried it. And there's no secret method. I tried it. It's simply we have to devote ourselves and be committed to this thing. And we have to spend quality, quiet time with God's word. And I'm here to tell you right now, if you are not spending quality time with God's word, if you're not spending quiet time with God's word every day, then you're missing the mark. You're missing the beauty that God has for you. Yeah, you're a Christian. Yeah, you believe in God. That's wonderful. But you're missing what he has given you. Yes, he's given you eternal life because you gave your life to Jesus. That's great. I'm so excited at the fact that I have eternal life. I give God praise at the fact that I have eternal life. But what about today? What about right here and the right now? I'm okay. Why? Because I am embracing God's word. Because the God's word, it tells me some things about myself. God's word, it encourages me. God's word lets me know that everything's going to be all right. Man, when I get down, when I get caught out there, all I can remember is God's word where he said that, that, that he says that I will be with you all the days of my life. He says that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. He said, yo, I am with you even till the end of time. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't you tell me that this word is not powerful and it gives us everything that we need. <sighs> As I was preparing this message, I didn't, it, it, it's amazing that God, he sent me to John 1 and 1. Some of you know it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. I, I, I wonder why did he send me that? Because some people refer to Jesus as the word. And it, lets, it reminds us of the great work that was done. Back in Genesis, John confirms it because God, he just spoke a word and we were created. Life was created. This earth was created. I don't believe in that big bang theory. You can believe it all you want, but I believe in my heart of hearts. I believe from all the research that I've done myself that God spoke a word and the world, the earth came into existence. I was also amazed that I was uh, uh, thinking and reading and pondering over this message that God wanted me to share with you. He, he took me to David and it showed me how significant it is when you spend quality time with God's word. How, when you spend that quiet time with God's word every day, then it gives you this, this total uh, a feeling of surrender. It gives you this total feeling of contentment. In fact, if you look at the words that, that David wrote in Psalms, he probably wrote it or he probably sang it, but in Psalms 27 and 4, he wrote or he sang to gaze upon the beauty uh, that is the delightful loveliness and the majestics and the grandeur of the Lord and to meditate, meditate in his temple. Are you seeing this? This is clearly the results of David spending intimate, quiet, and quality time with God. Even the phrase to gaze, to gaze, to gaze, it indicates that he was taking time. It indicates that he was resting upon the Lord. It indicates that he was uh, feeding on his word. It indicates that he was uh, allowing that word to saturate him, allowing that word to just take over him, allowing that word just to ooze in and out all through his life. You got to do this. 
when you embrace the word of God. We have to take time and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And when we do this, this is when we find ourselves engaging. This is when we find ourselves growing. Oh, to spend time with the master and to gaze upon his beauty. Oh, to spend time with his words and to become empowered. Oh, to spend time with marveling and learning of God. I'm reminded that we have a set time that we're supposed to finish our Bible study. But I get so tickled. I get so excited. I get so happy when all of a sudden, toward the end of the class, the students in the class, they have questions. The students of the class, they want to go deeper. The students of the class, all because of what we've been dealing with, all because we've been spending time in God's word, they want to go further. Come on, pastor. We ain't got to get off yet. I don't want to leave yet. I just love it. When you gaze, when you marvel, when you embrace this word, it's something about embracing that word that you want more and more of it. And I get excited at my students because they want more and more of that word. That lets me know that they're gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. That lets me know that they're marveling and they're feeling empowered by the word of God. And when we embrace the word of God intimately, we will begin to feel his power. We will begin to feel his anointing eye to gain upon the beauty of the Lord. My friends, that is significant because this ministry unified in Christ's ministry. God said it's time for you members to vertically align yourselves with me. Thus our theme for the year, vertically aligning ourselves with God. And that word, that word, that word gives us the nuggets to feed off of, the nuggets to grow off of. The nuggets that will empower us. The nuggets that will fix that situation that you're going through in your life right now. And I know, I know, I know some people, it's hard for them to get this. And this ain't in my notes, so I know when it ain't in my notes, Holy Spirit took, spent time with me earlier when I was preparing this, and then he always meets us at this service. And so I thank your Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus, because somebody out there need to hear this, and you need to hear it well, that this word, this word, this word, when you embrace this word intimately. So when you do something intimately, you do that thing for real. You see, you see what I'm saying? Y'all know what the word intimate means. When you do something intimately, that's serious business right there. That's when you hold on to something. That's when you put all your mind into it. That's when you put all your energy into it. That's when you put all your heart into it. When you in, when you embrace this word intimately, I trust me, your life will change. Your mindset will change. Your situation might not change, but the way you approach your situation might change. Your circumstance might not change, but the way you see your circumstance might change. And understand this. When you see things differently, you respond differently. When you see things differently, you will act differently. That's how this thing works. God ain't no magician, but he can give you a word that will strengthen you up. He can give you a word that will carry you. He can give you a word that will give you a swagger. He can give you a word that lets you know even in the midst of that fire, like Meshach uh, and Abednego, they did not burn. That fire could not touch them. Why? Because of the mighty word of God. Woo, Jesus. Listen, you have to embrace God's word intimately. No good message, no good sermon is a good sermon if you don't get some questions. So I have to pose these questions to you. And I offer and challenge you to write them down. And you ask yourself this question over and over and over again and be honest with yourself. As my brother Dern says, do a mirror check 
as we've been talking about, take a look in the mirror. Have you embraced God's word? Have you embraced God's word intimately? It's one way, it's one thing to read a verse a day, but it's another when you embrace that thing, when you spend time with it, because we move from embracing God's word to embracing God's word intimately. Because when you embrace God's word intimately, you spending some time with his word. You ain't spending five minutes with his word. You spending some dedicated time in his word. Matter of fact, you get to this posture of quietness so that God's word can begin to speak to your mind. It can begin to speak to your heart. It can begin to speak to your soul. But if you run into that thing, he won't, you're going to miss something. If you run into the word, if you run into the word, you're going to miss something. That's why sometimes when I hear people reading our scripture, I'll be saying to myself, man, why they read that scripture so fast? Slow it down, baby. Slow it down. And you read that word and you feed on it. You feed on every single word that comes from God. The third question, where on your list of many things to do in your life does embracing God's word intimately show up on your list? You ain't got to tell me. It's just something I want you to ponder. But if you got a list of 10 things and embracing God's word intimately is way down there, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's a problem. Yes, I know we got to work. Yes, I know we got to punch that clock. We got to get some rest. You need some rest. You need some rest when you got to work. I, hey, I'm not sitting here acting like I don't know. I work too. So you got to get rest. I'm keeping it 100 with you. But you got to find time in your life to make time. To embrace God's word intimately. Pray about it. God, help me to balance out my life. I got so much going on. I got school. I got the children. I got work. I got to deal with family. I got social stuff that I want to do. I got other uh, 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 recreational things that I want to do. But help me, God, as I recognize that embracing your word each and every day intimately must be a part of my life. It must be a part of my lifestyle. It must be a part of what I do. If you ain't doing it, I challenge you right now. And I don't know if it's true. Me and my wife have talked about it. Sometimes I think it works and sometimes I don't know if it does not. But if you are not, if you have not etched out some time each and every day to embrace God's word intimately, I challenge you, beginning tomorrow morning, what's tomorrow's date? The 15th. Beginning April the 15th. Oh, by the way, that's if you ain't filed your taxes yet, you got till tomorrow to file your, midnight tomorrow to file your taxes. Or the big guy, Uncle Sam, is going to be coming after you. But anyway, beginning tomorrow morning, if mornings are your thing, then for the next 21 days, you spend some intimate time with God. Take 15 minutes. Take 20 minutes. Take 30 minutes of your day. 30 minutes. And you get quiet. And you read his word. And don't bounce all over the place. You find a place and you settle there. Maybe the Bible app is a good place for you. They have a word a day. But don't just read the word a day. Read what scripture comes before. Read what scripture comes under it. Read the commentary that's attached, attached to it. And then begin to pray over that thing. Pray over it. And as you pray over it, just be quiet for a minute. Psalm 46 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. And in the stillness, trust me, God will begin to speak to you intimately. And when he speaks to you intimately, it's about you. Because then this word becomes personal in your life. And he will give you the direction that you need. Try it. It won't hurt you if you try it. It'll help you. Let me keep moving. The word of God. 
which of course is the Holy Bible. I heard someone say that the Holy Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth. Then I heard someone else say the Bible is the biblical insight for basic living every day. Reading the Bible teaches us to rely on God's strength, not on your own when you face tough times, when you face physical challenges, but on God. You rely on him for everything. Anything that you can imagine that comes up that you have to deal with in your life, it is covered in the word of God. And it gives you the strength. It helps you the ability to hold on. When you're reading these promises, it makes you hold on, recognizing the fact that my help is on the way. And I know we humans, we don't have the mind of God. And so therefore we want our help right now, quick, fast, in a hurry. But sometimes it don't. And I believe that's why Isaiah told us in the word of God, in Isaiah 40 and 31, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. These are words that God has given you, that he's speaking to you in your problem places. He's speaking to you in your worry places. He's speaking to you in those doubtful places. But you have to receive it and you have to embrace that. Can you imagine embracing Isaiah 40 and 31? Can you imagine embracing that deep down in your soul? and and, and all of a sudden, you'll find yourself waiting. And as you find yourself waiting, you will gain the strength. Why? Because, <coughs> excuse me, because you have gotten the strength. You have embraced God's word. Somebody had to type in the chat. Embrace God's word intimately. We have a lot of false information that we consume daily. We consume this false information through TV, through other media, as you know, social media, through wrong opinions of our colleagues, wrong opinions of our families, or even our own negative thoughts that we have. But reading the Bible daily, it sets the record straight. Reading the Bible daily, it enables us to discern truth and, and, and empowers us to reject the untruth. Reading the Bible daily, it helps us to learn, I mean, excuse me, it helps us to lean on God's promises and not on the world's so-called wisdom. The word, the word, there's, there's, there's nothing that can replace God's word. I hear you, Peter. I found in 2 Peter 1 and 3, 3 through 4, it says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of who of him who called us by his glory and goodness that knowledge of him we find it in his word through these through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. In other words, my brothers and my sisters, God has given us a knowledge and the very knowledge that he has given us is there to help us get through this craziness of this world. Dr. Tony Evans, he wrote, these comprehensive blessings are appropriated through the knowledge of God, which is the word of God. Through the, through the specific knowledge of God's will for and blessings to believers, this knowledge is different between that, that surface knowledge. In fact, I'll read what he said. He said, this knowledge is different is the difference between merely meeting the president of the United States and having a personal relationship with him. There's that intimacy. Some people we just know. Some people we know by passing. Some people we know by relationship. But some people we know by deep, intimate relationships. Me and my wife, we've been married 38 years. That's 
our relationship is intimate. We know each other. How di- how intimate are you with the Word of God? I'll even take it to relationships, siblings, for example. Last weekend we was in South Carolina, and I witnessed the joy that my wife Lynn and Colleen had. They just was having so much fun. They looked like three little kids who had just opened up their Christmas gifts. But the joy came because of that intimate relationship they have with each other. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? That I want you to get the significance of embracing God's word intimately. Don't put it down. Don't play around with it. But you want to do it intimately. Reading the Bible daily reminds us of the resources that God has given us against all the troubles of this world, against uh, fighting against Satan's strategies. He's trying to beat us down. But everything we need is in the word. Reading and embracing God's word daily is the very nourishment that we need to grow in our Christian journey. Traveling this Christian journey without feeding on the word of God daily is crazy, y'all. It's like starving ourselves. Why would you starve yourself? Starving yourself of the vital nutrients that you need in order to survive in this cold, cruel, and corrupt world. You can't do it without it. Perhaps that's why you feel so weak right now. Perhaps that's why you're feeling so uh, 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 um, underpowered right now, because you don't have the strength, because you don't have the proper nutrients. In our life, we have to eat. We need the vitamins and the nutrients and all the things that, y'all remember those charts that they used to have? We need to have this many, this much fruit, this much sodium, this much of that, this much protein, blah, 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 blah. But they were telling you that because they're telling you these are the things at a minimum of what you need in order to survive. What I'm sitting here telling you is that this word, it gives you everything that you need, nutrient upon nutrient upon nutrient in order for you to survive in this life. You don't have to survive all broke up and broke down. You don't have to survive all woe is me. You don't have to survive sad and, and, and feeling the, the Excuse me, and feeling dejected because God loves you and he constantly reminds of this. Listen, our greatest tool, our greatest resource is God's word. Let me look real quickly at this chapter. Hebrews chapter four, understanding this about the whole book of Hebrews it was, it was written to present the sufficiency and the superiority of Christ. We don't know who the author is. Some say it was Paul. Some say it was Luke. Some say it was Barnabas. Some say it was Apollos and so forth and so on. But what we do know is that it is the word of God. And in this chapter, What we find is that the author, he refines the theme which was found in chapter three, where the theme in chapter three, it talked about the entire generation of Israel lost out on their inheritance of the promised land due to a lack of faith. Here, the author, he points out that the rest promised by God is still offered through Christ. And so this razor sharp truth of the word of God is there to separate what is truly spiritual from what is faithless. We should make every effort to obtain our inheritance in Christ, which is something separate from our eternal salvation. We can also be confident knowing Jesus can uniquely sympathize with our temptations and our sufferings because the word of God it gives us so it gives us so many examples of how 
to deal with life's ups and downs, to deal with life's challenges, to deal with what we face. It's, it's in there. The word of God, it gives us more than a simple collection of, of words and poems and, 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 and wisdom, but it's a vehicle for God, for, for God to communicate his ideas. It has a living, life-changing, and dynamic power that works in us. With it is, it has this, which I'll talk about more next week, but it has this incisiveness of a surgeon's knife. God's word, it reveals who we are and who we are not. Maybe that's why people don't want to read it. It penetrates to the core of our moral and spiritual lives. It discerns both the good and the evil that's within us. Man, maybe that's why people don't read that word, huh? Because it reveals these things. But the beauty of God's word, for everything that it, re that it reveals that you are not, it will show you how to become what you are not. God's powerful word, it will change us. His word will change us. And we must not only listen to it, we must allow God's word to transform us. The Bible says that we must be doers of the word and not merely listeners of the word. One commentator wrote, have you ever had an experience of God's word that made you feel exposed? Yeah. Have you ever heard it preached and it felt like the preacher was talking right to you? Yeah. Have you ever felt your soul sliced open by the word? Yeah. Listen, the word of God will separate what is truly spiritual from what is faithless, what is worldly. Our scripture this morning, it contains this warning that unbelief never goes undetected. That is to say, if you're being real or if you're not being real, the word of God will detect it. Here it is. It's right here in our scripture. The first portion of verse 12. For the word of God is alive and living. The word of God is alive and living and powerful. I missed the part. The word of God is alive and powerful. The word of God is alive and powerful. The word of God is alive and powerful. This word in this particular verse is logos. But in this use of the word logos, it is not talking about Jesus, who is the word. But it is talking about the written word, that word that has been inspired by God, that word that was breathed into men to write and sing and pen this Bible. It was inspired. It was breathed on them. So when you hear that word logos, in this particular pericope, he is talking about the written word of God, which is what? The Bible. In our passage this morning, the word of God is living and powerful. Living. That is to say, constantly and actively alive. Written instructions for our daily, our daily living. Powerful. That is to say, energizing. Releasing a strength and an ability that is not possible apart from God. God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He is constantly aware of all that is going on in the universe. And the important point, and the important point to this context is that he knows where there is real faith and where there is only an intellectual Absent, I'm a, an intellectual list of facts and fictions. That right there, my brothers and sisters, is what I would call superficial or false faith. This passage of scripture is essentially present 
to remind us of who we are and we should never attempt to go undetected because we can't. We can never go undetected by the word of God because the word of God is alive and powerful. The word of God, it shows you the real you. It reminds us of who we are in the sight of God. It reminds us that we're never alone. It reminds us of who we belong to. It reminds us of the power that we have access to. It reminds us of our moral and spiritual lives. The word. The word of God. And I admonish you this morning, my brothers and sisters, to embrace God's word intimately. For the word of God, according to this scripture, is a lie. And as we read this entire chapter, we can see why Christians ought to put their best foot forward in fulfilling God's will and exercise real faith. This is done as we embrace his word. That is to simply say when we embrace his word intimately, we are going deep. We are spending that dedicated time with him. And we are allowing his word to marinate in our souls, our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. God's word diagnoses the condition of man, and he reveals it to us. God meets us in his word, and the Holy Spirit works powerfully through his word. The spiritual work of God's word goes far beyond the basic educational value of learning the Bible. No, nah, and it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. And as it goes deeper in you, it begins to reveal how useful you are. And it will give you the nuggets to empower you to be all that God has called you to be. The word of God is powerful. And as I thought about the fact that the word of God is living and the word of God is powerful, Holy Spirit said, let's pause for a moment and let's talk about what the word of God says about the word of God. So if you have your pen, I got a few scriptures that I want to share with you and then we're going to be out for the day. The word of God has healing power and the power to deliver all of us from oppression. Somebody to say, thank you, Jesus. For the Bible tells us in Matthew 8 and 16, when evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought up to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all sick. The word of God, it has healing and delivering power. The word of God, it cleanses us. If we take heed according to God's word, our way will be cleansed. Some of the type, thank you, Jesus, right there. For the Bible tells us in John 15 and 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. When we allow the word of God into us, when we receive it intimately, according to scripture, he will make ways for us to be cleansed. So you come as you are, but you allow the word to change you. You allow the word to cleanse you. <laughs> the word of God hidden in our hearts keeps us from sinning. For the psalmist tells us in the Bible in Psalms 119 and 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. When you truly embrace God's word intimately, you just ain't going to go out there and do any old thing. You ain't going to do it because you're going to feel some conviction. Holy Spirit will convict you of what you not should be doing, and the word will enhance it for you. The word will show you, no, nah, that ain't right. 
It ain't about debate. It ain't about debating the word. No, it will let you know. And it will keep you from sinning. It will cause you to want to do the right thing. It will cause you to want to love right. It will cause you to want to act right. It will cause you to want to think right. The word of God, I love this one, is our source of strength. Once again, found in Psalms 119. I don't know if y'all notice it, but that's what we've been doing every Sunday. Uh, and our, our Bible scripture has been out of Psalms 119, but listen to what it says in Psalms 119, 28. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. The psalmist recognized where his strength would come from. He recognized that he was he was weary. He was beat down. He didn't know if he was coming or going. And he cried out to the Lord and said, my soul is weary. Hallelujah. I can't make it. I can't take it. I need you. Strengthen me according to your word. His word will strengthen you. But you got to embrace his word intimately. And as you embrace his word intimately, trust me when I tell you, it will give you strength like you've never known it before. It will give you a hope like you've never had before. It will give you a swagger like you never knew in your life. But you have to embrace God's word intimately. The word of God has inherent power and authority against demonic powers. You ought to say again, thank you, Jesus. For the Bible shows that power when Jesus spoke evil and evil had to obey. In fact, we see right there in Luke chapter 4, verse 36. Luke Chapter 4, verse 36. Luke, chapter 4, verse 36. What words are these with authority and power? He gives order to the impure spirits and they come out. This was after Jesus spoke to those evils and they had to flee. They had to come out because Jesus spoke a word to them and they had to come out of that man. Jesus spoke a word to them and they had to come out. The power of this word, it says is inheritance. That says that you too have the ability to inherit God's word, to inherit the power that comes with his word, but you must embrace God's word intimately. The word of God comes with the power of the Holy Spirit, with much assurance, hallelujah. For Paul reminds us in 1 Thessal Thessalonians 1 and 5. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power. Oh, my God. In other words, the word, when it comes, it comes with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. I just mentioned conviction. The word will convict you when you embrace it intimately. One more. There's a whole lot of them. I had about 30 of them, but I knew I couldn't share all 30 of them with you. They good too. But I'm going to give you one more. The word of God works effectively through those who believe. The Bible tells us that the word is within us as believers. In fact, the Bible, we find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. As I said, that's merely a few of what the word of God is and what the word of God does. But my time does not afford me space to share the countless powerful nuggets about the word of God. But I pray, I pray, I pray that this serves you well. That you, 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 you receive this dish on today, but yet it makes you hungrier for even more. And it causes you to accept that challenge that I just gave you. 
to wake up tomorrow morning and for the next 21 days that you take time, you spend time, you make time in order to fast and feast on God's word with, by using quality time and quiet time. Don't rush through it, baby. Don't rush through it. Because if you rush through it, you're going to get indigestion. And when you get indigestion, it don't feel good. I know. I used to get it all the time. And it didn't feel good. It, 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 it didn't feel good. And I'm trying to tell you, when you allow this word, when you feast on this word, when you allow this word to meditate in your mind, when you allow it to meditate in your soul, when you allow it to meditate in your spirit, I'm trying to tell you right now, you're going to be good. I don't know what you're going through, but you trust me. Well, I, I, trust what I'm telling you. Feed on this word. I know I got to get out of here. I'm looking at the time right now. And I promise you, I will finish up next week because we only took we only talked about the A portion of verse 12. The A portion said, for the word of God is alive and powerful. We still got to deal with the rest of verse 12. And we'll pick up on that next week as we continue this important task which is to vertically align ourselves with God. I meant to tell y'all last week, I don't think that this um, series is going to have you shouting and running and all of that. I don't think that's what God has given me. I get excited, but this ain't one of them shouting messages. This is one of them listening messages. This is one of those messages that you, you, just, you ponder it. You consider it deeply. Because this is real talk, y'all. This is not a game. In order for us to vertically align ourselves with God last week, we said that we had to wholeheartedly surrender to Jesus. This week, we said that we have to embrace God's word intimately. Next week, we're going to unpack how it, how we talked about it being alive and powerful. Next week, we're going to unpack how it's alive and powerful in your life. Before we go, I want you to consider this. The word is living and powerful through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For in the same book, Hebrews, God sent me to chapter one. At first, he sent me to verse three, and I'm going to stay with verse three. And it says, he is, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Don't listen to that. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he upholds the universe by the word. By the word. You, my brothers, you, my sisters, resolve right here and right now to embrace God's word intimately. We've talked today about the word being living, and we talked today about the word being powerful. We shared countless scriptures that showed you the power of God's word. It showed you how active when we use that word alive, that means active. You alive, I'm alive. That means it's active every day. We've shown you that today. And then we challenged you to take this serious. And for the next 21 days, mark it down, beginning April the 15th, for the next 21 days, set aside some time, 30 minutes of your day. And get intimate with God's word. And the one thing about it, there's this app called UVision. If you don't have it, it's a Bible app. And it, you can even set an alarm. 
and it will remind, I, I'm not a alarm, a reminder. And it will pop up on your phone to remind you. Don't ignore the reminder. I've done that so many times. But don't ignore the reminder. Click on it. Set it for that time that you know you're going to be able to spend some quiet and intimate time with God. And I promise you, get back with me after 21, 21 straight days. And we might even have a testimonial service. We will have people come on screen and will tell you what happened in their lives over those 21 days. This is not in my notes, y'all. Every time I tell you what it ain't in my notes, Holy Spirit injected and parted in the service. Like that, like that thing Tiana did during Resurrection Sunday. We got a, we have a, uh, I forgot what she called it, but it was a news break, a news break. So this is a news break because it's not in my outline. 21 days, the next 21 days, every day, you spend some quiet and intimate time with the word of God and watch you begin to see changes in your life. But you got to do it intimately. You got to embrace that thing, not as a challenge, not a, well, let me see if Pastor know what he talked. No, you embrace it from the, present, from the perspective, man, I love God. He loves me. I love Jesus. He loves me. I love the Holy Spirit. He loves me. And the least I can do is spend some intimate, quiet time so I can hear what God has to say to me. I'm, I challenge you today. You can use the Bible version or you can just pray to God. And ask God, where do you want me to read from for the next 21 days? He may tell you to read John, starting with chapter 1. He may tell you to read Acts, starting with chapter 1. I don't know. That's between you and God. He just told me to challenge you for the next 21 days. If you're sincere about it and you enter it, not with any crazy expectations, but you enter it because of your love and your compassion. For God, I love him so much. I have so much compassion on God that I want him to speak to me intimately. Will you take the challenge? 21 days. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for what you've given us to share on this morning. We pray that each and every person at the sound of my voice, whether they're here now or will listen to this later, we pray in the name of Jesus that they will embrace your word, that they will embrace your word intimately because we know that your word is alive. We know that your word is powerful. We know that your word is living. So we pray as we enter these next 21 days that we are going to etch out some time, some quiet time, some one-on-one -on -one time, and some time with your word. We ain't going to jump all over the place. We ain't going to brag about it to everybody. But we just want to be intimate with your word. So that it will change us. So it will give us a different mindset. It will give us a different perspective. The word is so powerful. And it's so living. Which means that it can, it can, it can engage with everything that's going on in our lives. Help us, God. Help each one of us, God, to finally get tired and finally get real with ourselves and embrace your word intimately. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, <clears throat> we got to get out of here, but I want to offer Christ to those who don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Today is your day, and we welcome you to Unified in Christ Ministry. If you need Jesus, we welcome you. For the Bible is certain in Romans 10 and 9 that if, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead by God, you will be saved. It's just that simple. But you need to be saved because if you're not saved and you embrace his word, 
You're not going to get what you could get because the Holy Spirit will help you as you embrace this word. The Holy Spirit's whole job is to reveal to you all that God has said, all that Jesus has said. He will make you understand each and every part of the word that you embrace. But you got to have Jesus. So we invite you. And more importantly than that, having Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior guarantees you to eternal life. I don't know about you, but I choose heaven over hell. What do you choose? The second part of the invitation is for those who are saved. Maybe you no longer go to a church. Maybe you don't have a church home. Whatever the reason may be, but we invite you to Unified in Christ ministry. We would love to have you as a member of our church. We would love for you to partner with us. We having a good time. Even though we're a virtual church, God has shown us how we can still stand and grow together in Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, that's important. That's essential to your Christian journey is standing and growing together to vertically align yourself to a God so that he can horizontally help cause you to impact the communities around you. So there's, you can call us at 904-601-8279, 904-601-8279, or go to our website, uicmchurch.org, or you'll see that QR code up on the screen point your device to that QR code. It will take you to our website. When you get there, there are four different forms that you can fill out that will they will come to our church email account and someone will return to reach. We would love to have you join us on this journey. It's a great journey. We're learning. We're growing. We're having a good time in Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, I thank you for your attention. I thank you for your time. I thank you for all that God has shown us on today. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can actually imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, we give you praise. Amen, amen, and amen. And I want to say thank you for that. We had a generational event on the day. Thank you, Sister Lynn Mars. Thank you. Carmen, thank you. No, let me do it in order. Thank you, Sister Lynn Mars. Thank you, Sister Nikki Joyner. Thank you, Sister Nikki Joyner. Thank you for Carmen Joyner. Mom, daughter, daughter, and son. It don't get no better than that. God bless you all. We love you with the love of Christ Jesus. Go in peace. I just wanna praise you.